Hey everybody, this is Steven from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. Now, um, I was at uh, San Diego Comic Fest uh, this last weekend. It was a really great show. Um, I actually recorded a number of programs. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at them. Uh, I had a new microphone, so fingers crossed uh, they all recorded. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, get those posted soon. Uh, it was a really good show. It's very, it's a small show, but very and very intimate. I mean, you actually, what's great is you actually have time to talk to people, not just creators, but other fans. And it's just, it's a really wonderful show. I mean, uh, and if you, if you live in the LA San Diego area, I really recommend it. I, this is my third year and it just, it just keeps getting better and better. And, uh, they, they had some really great guests this year. Uh, some wonderful panels and uh, just uh, get, you know, met some people I know, got to meet some new people. Uh, and it was just it was lots of fun. So um, once again, hopefully we'll fingers crossed everything recorded well and we'll uh, we'll get that up soon. Um, it's actually a pretty good size week. There's uh, there's quite a few uh, quite a few new books this week and a lot of returning uh, lots of number twos this week. Uh, so let's just get going. Uh, first off, we have the amazing Spider-Man number one written by Zeb Well with artwork by uh, John Romita Jr. on the pencils and Scott Hanna inking. Um, so I, I haven't read Spider-Man in a long, long time. I've read, you know, some mini series and stuff like that, that, but this is kind of the first series I've actually read in a while. The good news is that if you haven't been reading Spider-Man, this is definitely a good jumping on point because uh, apparently Peter Parker has been missing for six months. So, he was uh he something happened and then it was so literally like this this the second the third page is like six months later so he's been gone for like six months and so things are and he apparently just disappeared like nobody knew where he was so everybody's kind of bitter and you know pissed off at him you know ma is not happy mary jane's not happy uh, his friends are not pretty much nobody's happy. And so he comes, so he, he's kind of trying to get back into the rhythm of things. And so what it is, is you have, uh, you have kind of the, the, the mob bosses of, of the city sort of working on their territories and stuff like that. So he kind of gets involved with that whole, um, rigmarole and, and, and that's pretty much the first issue. Now there is, there's actually a couple big things that happen, uh, at the end, there's, uh, the ending of the, this first issue. And then there's an epilogue. So both of them have some, and I'm not going to spoil them here, but they have some, I wouldn't say they're shocking. It's more of like, Oh, that'll be interesting to see where you take that. Um, so, so it's actually surprisingly good. Wells, the, uh, script is really quite nice. Uh, he, um, I think a lot of it really, most of the issues kind of about Peter Parker. And that's actually, uh, once, once again, I always say it's really a good thing when you deal with the, the, um, the actual person behind the mask, because I think that is a much more interesting story. The Spider-Man stuff's you know, once again, it's easy to do. And, and those scenes are really fine, but I think Wells does a really good job of capturing Peter Parker. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I think it actually works pretty well. Now I have said it before. I'm not generally the most, uh, adamant John Romita Jr. Fan. Uh, I think a lot of it really comes down to, I think it really depends on who's inking him. And in this case, uh, Scott Hanna, uh, is inking him and he does a really good job. I think the the problem I have with Ramita and, and depending on who's inking him, sometimes it's really sketchy and just not not kind of cleaned up as well. Where Hannah does a really nice job of really you know sticking with his pencils, but kind of really cleaning them up for the most part. And it's it's a really it's it's actually a really good looking book. I mean, when he went to DC and uh, started doing Superman, it was the same same sort of thing. He actually had a really good anchor, and I just think that he's he's a good storyteller. I just think he needs a strong anchor. And in this case, Hannah, it really does uh, do a good job of inking his pencils, and it, you know it's it's actually pretty nice looking. So. Uh, I, I think it's a, I think it's a good, 
once again, a good jumping point to jump into Spider-Man. I enjoyed the first issue. It'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of things that Wells has set up here, and it'll be interesting to see how it all, you know, pans out and everything. Uh, next up, we have Justice League 75, written by Joshua Will Williamson, uh, with pencils by Rafa Sandoval, uh, and inks by uh, Jordi uh, Targana. So this is the big um, uh, death of the Justice League. Uh, so basically, the best way to describe it is it, this really ties into Crisis on Infinite Earths. And, you know, it takes some of uh, 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 the elements from that. You don't have to read it. So it also takes... So there's that. There's the... Um, the 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 death lantern you know where people came back to life and stuff like that so there's that and then you you so you have the 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 kind of classic justice league and then you have the new justice league so you kind of have all that stewing together um and williamson so so what it is is the 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 justice league gets or the pretty much the most of the justice league the classic ones get get transported to uh the earth where there's the black superman and so he he says hey there's there's this problem so they go to the planet and and uh pharaoh from crisis on infinite earth is there and he's created a machine to what he's doing is he thinks he's going to fix all the multiverse madness but he probably wouldn't have destroying it that's kind of where we're at in this first issue so theoretically the justice uh the justice league is dead black adam is the only one who survived and he's gone back and th this leads is going to lead into the dark crisis uh which is the big summer event for dc um it, 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 first of all they're not going to be dead let's let's just be realistic about that this is just a, a you know plot element so, but I will say, I'll give Williamson, it's, it's a decent setup. I mean, I wasn't particularly overwhelmed with it because it's, it's, you know, part of the problem when you do this, it's like, oh, it's shocking that they're dead. No, it's not shocking at all that they're dead. I mean, that's the least, that is the least shocking thing. There's actually nothing I found particularly shocking in the, in the story because once again, things will get fixed. Some may die in the end, but let's be honest, they, everybody always comes back. Um, I did the um, Sandoval's artwork is actually really nice. It's it's uh, he I guess he's gonna he I believe this is a new creative team on the book. So I, I he the 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 book's really nice looking and everything. I just think that it's it you know it, once again it's it's an event. So uh, I I really take kind of kid gloves with with events because most of the time they're they end up for me kind of falling flat on their face and they're really just in a lot of a lot of time sales gimmicks more than than a story but we'll see williamson's a good writer and so we'll kind of see where he goes from here uh next up we have naughty list number one uh written by nick santora with artwork by lee ferguson so what this is is it's a story of nicholas uh Sin Sintaclis who basically is Santa Claus. And so it starts off where he's just a normal guy and he doesn't really age. He gets to about age 40 and doesn't age, but it takes place back in, you know, like medieval type time, you know, where there's, you know, and so, so what it is, is he, he kind of discovers that he's not aging. His wife ultimately dies. His daughter dies, but yet he's still pretty much the same. So, but one of the things he, he has this, this, feeling to like make toys at first he makes them for his daughter and then he starts making them for for poor kids in the town everything and so once again there's like this this star this this force that is shepherding him to be santa claus that's really what it comes down to so he gets this machine that that spits out the naughty and nice list and so really the what the twist is that uh santora has done here is that somebody has stolen the naughty list and they're starting to kill the people on the naughty list, like, you know, mob bosses, you know, people who who have done bad things and they're on the naughty list. So he now, you know, at the end of the issue, he's like, I got to go find it, find out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I think it's interesting. Um, and um, 
I think there's some good concepts. I wouldn't say that I'm particularly overwhelmed with the first issue, but there's a lot of exposition that Santora is doing here. So I, I won't not knock him for that. Um, it, it's this first issue is a setup. Like I said, I think there's some good ideas. I think the really the big question is where is it? Where is he going to be able to take it from here? And that's going to I think be the really big key to to whether this book is worth you know, going from here. Uh, Ferguson's artwork's really nice. It's a, it's a decent looking book. Um, uh, you know, he definitely doesn't look like Santa Claus, which I think is actually kind of a good idea. We'll, we'll see kind of where that goes visually, but overall, I think, it, I think it's kind of worth checking out. Not, a, not a huge recommendation. I, I thought once again, I think there's some good elements. The question is going to be, where is it going to go from here? Uh, next up we have Thor 24, uh, so there's multiple stories. So uh, first you have Donnie Cates and Nick Klein uh, doing the funeral. So there's the, 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 they do the beginning and the end piece. So they book in the, the, the stories. Uh, the next uh, is Walter Simonson doing a Beta Ray Bill story. Then we have Dan Jurgens writing and penciling uh, uh, the, a story with Klaus Jansen inking. Uh, then we have, um, uh, J. Michael Shazinski writing with Ol Oliver uh, Coppell um, as the artist. Uh, then we have Al Ewing and Lee Garbett. Um, uh, Al's writing and Lee Garbett's uh, uh, drawing. And then the final small story uh, in there is uh, written by Jason Aaron uh, with artwork by uh, uh, Daz uh, Pas Pastoris. So so once again, so the really the, the Cates and Klein story is the few that you know odin's dead and and it's really thor is now um uh takes the place of his father and so uh that that's kind of the framing story of how he's dealing with it not well obviously and how the family and everybody else is dealing with it like i said walt simonson does a beta ray bill and it's kind of like how beta ray bill becomes uh, gets the ship and and it's kind of a prelude to what happened in the daniel warren johnson uh uh miniseries recently uh so that's a good that's a good companion piece uh the jurgen story is is just kind of a kind of a basic you know it's kind of a thor story it's nice it's 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 okay for what it is the artwork's nice uh i like Klaus jansen's inks over uh his pencils gives it kind of a different look uh, the Straczynski uh, uh, Capel story is actually quite interesting. Uh, it's um, it's Thor basically uh, making up a will, not only for uh, Asgard but for for Earth. So it, it, he he has this lawyer come and he has to kind of write it for both sides of the fence. That was actually a really good story. Uh, the Ewing Garbit story is a Loki story uh, that is going to lead into a uh, series or mini series. So that's kind of interesting and it kind of bounces. It, it, it's just, I thought it was an interesting take on Loki. So we'll kind of see where it goes. And uh, the Aaron uh, pa Pastoris uh, story is basically uh, the dwarves versus giants. And it has to do with like Thor's hammer and how, um, you know, if somebody's uh, worthy of picking up the hammer, you know, it's, it's that kind of, kind of story. Um, I, I found it all pretty interesting. I th don't think there was any stories that I didn't really care for. I mean, um, I, I wasn't necessarily overwhelmed by the Jurgens uh, story, but I, I think it worked well for what it was. It just wasn't really one of the highlights. Obviously, the Simons and Beta Ray Bill. It was really nice to see him back with the character he created, um, and and really the uh, Straczynski Coppel one was really really good. I really enjoyed that. Um, overall, I think I think it was pretty good. Um, the, you know, kind of the question is. Is it is it a good jumping on point? I don't know because I haven't been reading Thor for a while, but I think it's a it's a decent kind of special issue. It's it's technically they're calling it the 750th issue. That's why it's oversized and has multiple stories. So that that's kind of why it's kind of an anniversary special. I, I think if you just want to pick this up by itself, it's 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 kind of it, it's it's pretty decent overall. There, like I said, I don't think there's fortunately there's no really clunkers in the bunch, and and that's always a win for for a book like this that has multiple stories. Uh, next up, we have Blood Stained Teeth number one, written by Christian Ward with artwork by Patrick Reynolds. So what it is, is you have basically, you know, vampires that are firstborn 
And then you have what it, what is referred to as sips, people that are, are, are made into vampires, that are turned into vampires. So what it is is this one uh, firstborn vampire, basically for a fee, he will, he will turn you into a vampire. Uh, and so what it is is that's how he... So, so what it is, the firstborns are, you know, like the rich, they, you know, stay behind the scenes, they run stuff, but they don't make a big deal where, and so what it is, is the sips, you know, the, what it is they're turning in. So you have like, uh, he turns this, uh, like, you know, uh, influencer and, you know, she starts, oh, I'm going to be a vampire on TikTok. And so, so the, you know, pretty much the firstborns are starting to kind of like, there's, they're getting tired of these sips. So what it is, is it's kind of like a war against the Sips. And what it is, is this vampire who's been turning uh, people into to Sips. Uh, he, he has been told, he has been given an ultimatum that he has to go and kill all these people that he's turned into to vampires. So that's the basic premise here. I think... Um, I think there's some some interesting concepts here. Um, uh, Ward does a nice job of setting things up, but once again, this this first issue is, uh, has a pretty good amount of exposition, so it's a lot of setup and stuff like that, kind of introducing all the characters and everything. So there's 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 kind of that. It's it's that, but once again, I think there's some interesting ideas. There's been a lot of vampire books, and I think this is a little bit different. We'll kind of see where it goes. Uh, and Reynolds' artwork's actually really nice. The the color work is very unique, where it has kind of a like a kind of a, like a day glow look. Uh, the colors are really wild and everything, and it's it's kind of an odd it's it's an odd choice, but I think it kind of makes sense. Uh, Heather Moore did the co colors. And it's just, it's a very, it's very interesting because usually vampire books are like really dark and everything. So I think it's uh, kind of interesting that, that uh, uh, they use these candy colors to, to kind of give it a really kinetic look. So visually it's, it's quite interesting. Once again, we'll kind of see where it goes, but I think there's some good concepts here. Uh, next up, we have the Swamp Thing number 12 written by Ram V with artwork by Mike Perkins. Um, so once so we're in the middle of the second story arc so uh jennifer has has gone to try to find levi in in the green and so he's kind of trapped there because he's trying to like hold things together in the green and yet he's still kind of like struggling because of the the split with his brother jacob so that and then of course uh uh, Teffy Holland is, you know, helping Jennifer to try to get Levi out of the green so he can he can escape because he's kind of trapped there. That's kind of what's going on. I mean, there's there's kind of some other stuff I don't really want to talk about because it's 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 kind of where the second story arc is going. But that's the main thrust of this particular issue. So um, once again, we're we're in uh, issue twelve of sixteen. So. Uh, Ram is really, he really, I love his version of Swamp Thing. I think the thing is that, um, one, I love this book, but two, you really have to start from the beginning because otherwise, you know, you just can't pick up this issue or any, even the, if you haven't read the first story arc, jumping into the second story arc, you're just going to be totally lost. Um, I do really, I really recommend this book. Uh, once again, uh, it's more of, I don't recommend this particular issue. I recommend that you go back and start. There is a trade of the first, uh, 12 issues and, um, or I think 10 issues. Yeah, it was 10 issues. And, uh, so, and I'm sure they'll collect this, uh, either, and there'll be a second trade and hopefully there'll be one collection that collects everything all at once. But, um, uh, once again, Ram V is just knocking out of the park. I love his Swamp Thing. Uh, Mike Perkins is just, just nailing it on the artwork. The artwork is absolutely stunning. Uh, it's really, I highly recommend this book, but once again, definitely, uh, start from the beginning. Don't jump in this issue. Uh, next up, we have The Last Ronin number 5. Yes, it's finally here. Uh, so we have the story by Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, and Tom Waltz with the script by uh, Tom Waltz and Kevin Eastman. Then we have the layouts uh, by Kevin Eastman. And then the uh, the finish artwork is by Isu and uh, Isaac uh, Escora. So <laughs> it's been a long time. I know this has it's been nearly a year for five issues so it's been a long time coming so 
hopefully you have been ready reading this, but I will not go into too much detail. But once again, if you have not within a year heard what's going on, then I'm sorry. This is a spoiler, but you've just been living under a rock. So what it is is all the turtles, uh, except for Raphael, has has been killed. Uh, Splinter has been killed by um, uh, Hiroto, uh, the bad guy. So he's kind of like a new shredder. That's that's I guess you get the best way to describe it. So this issue really culminates what has led up to this of Raphael basically getting revenge on Hiroto. Uh, for killing his family. And so you also have Casey, uh, the daughter of April in the original Casey. And so there's kind of that going on. And and once again, there is a big final battle. That's pretty much what this issue is. And it does tie everything up nice. There is an epilogue after after the, um, uh, the, the final fight. And it, it's kind of interesting that there could be more stories, but considering how long it took this book to, to get out, hopefully they'll just let this one go. And um, I mean, I would like to see more stories set in this time period. I think it would be interesting with with Casey and April, uh, her mom. And but but the 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 question comes down to was it a satisfying ending? And I think for the most part it it, it was, but it's also a little hard because it's been so long since you know even the last issue came out, issue four, that I, I think it's going to be one of those that I did enjoy it. I, I I think it's a really good story and everything, but I think going back and rereading it in one shot is really definitely going to be the way to go. Um, so, so is it, has it, has it been worth it? I think so. I don't know that it's been worth it for a year in that respect because it's been very late, but I still think it's uh, worth checking out. I know there'll be a trade or hopefully a hardcover of this, uh, but, but the long wait is over. So yes, go to your comic store this week and, and hopefully they'll, they'll have copies. Uh, next up, we have Rogues number two, uh, written by Joshua, Joshua Williamson, uh, with artwork by Leo Mack. So what what it is, so the rogues, so I'll go down the line. It's Captain Cold, Golden Glyre, Trickster, Bronze Tiger, Magenta, Heat Wave, Mirror Master, and sort of Gorilla Grodd. So what it is, is the team, minus Gorilla Grodd, is going to Gorilla City because he Captain Cold has figured out that this could this would be the biggest heist of all time because uh, Gorilla City is just just packed with gold apparently they're sitting on this huge gold mine so uh that that's basically what the the setup here so so the second issue that that was you know the so the first issue they broke mirror master out of the uh insane asylum and so now they're heading to gorilla city and so they're now so there's kind, kind of scoping it out but what's interesting that williamson has done here is I mean, mostly anytime there's been stories about Gorilla City, it's just like, oh, there's a bunch of apes running around and like, you know, whatever they're, you know, like Superman shows up and they want to beat him up or whatever. Flash shows up. And so what this, so he, what I love that Williamson has done here is he's really created an interesting thing where Grodd runs Gorilla City, but it's kind of the, the best way to, to really put it. It's like the mafia. It's like, he's the godfather and then there's everybody else. And that's really fascinating. And I think the other really, really just brilliant thing is that he creates a city that's more like a normal city where there's there's rich people, there's poor people, and there's also humans who have gone there and they're, they're like, you know, maybe paying off bit of debts because they gambled or some, something to that effect. But, you know, it's it's interesting because it's it's like there's both a hierarchy and, and everything. And it's really just a fascinating look that we've never seen in Gorilla City. And it's just, it's kind of brilliant. And Leo Max artwork, I love him. He he uh, did uh, Basketful of Heads, uh, was one of the Hill House comics. He's a really great artist, and I really like his artwork on this book. He really just it's it's really a wonderful looking book. Um, I I'm really loving this book to death. The second issue was amazing. I mean, I love the first issue. Second issue was just just absolutely stunning. So it's it's really worth checking out if you've hopefully uh, you can still find the first issue. Definitely need to be reading this book. Uh, next up we have Demons number two, written by Scott Snyder with artwork by Greg Capullo. 
So uh, we have uh, Lam, who is uh, her father was a priest and he he got killed in the first issue. Sorry, uh, but uh, not not that that's a big shock that happened early on. But there's Gus, who is uh, is a demon, but he has like the the the, the spark or whatever uh, that that they have that is able to kill the demons. Uh, it's kind of like a um, uh, ethereal thing that that they they have in weapons and so what it is is he wears a headband that keeps him kind of makes him doesn't make him normal he's still he's still a demon but he's he's not a, a wild demon that's that's the best way to put it so what the second issue is is um uh so uh the daughter finds out you know she that her dad did all this stuff and is part of a team to help you know to, to try to stop demons because they've they've been coming to earth and there's a big meteor coming with with demons so they have to try to kind of find it and stop it before it all happens and so that's kind of the setup for this this second issue um it's interesting i i like i said when i when i said the first issue i i i think there's good ideas here um you know, we're still kind of in the early phase of like learning everything. I mean, the first issue was a ton of exposition. The second issue does have some nice action and stuff going. And, um, I, I think it does have some good, com uh, you get to kind of meet the team members and stuff like that. So I think that's good. And we're starting, you know, in, in the, uh, Gus is trying to, uh, train, uh, lamb, uh, to be, you know, uh, kind of be in her father's footsteps, which she kind of doesn't want to do. But she knows that she kind of has to in a way, you know, she's it's something that she doesn't want to do, but she she knows she needs to do it to, you know, help save the world. Really what that comes down to. Um, and once again, I, I think the second issue does build nicely on the first issue. Uh, of course, Capullo's artwork is always a big win and uh, it's a really good looking book. So I think it'll you know, we'll kind of see where the third issue goes. Like I said, it's moving along nicely. It's not, you know, you know, gunning down the road. But but it's moving along at a nice pace, so we'll kind of you know, we'll kind of keep going. I think it's worth still worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have Batman Beyond the White Knight number two, uh, written and drawn by Sean Murphy. So uh, Bruce has escaped from prison, and so we find out that there was one point where Joker pretty much had him, and so he implanted a chip into to Bruce's brain. So now Joker can actually communicate with him and he sees him kind of like his, I guess you could say, he's, you know, like in his mind, but he sees him as like a hologram. That's visually what, what Murphy has done here. So he's trying to, to get, um, to, to not the Batcave, but like one of the safe houses he's set up to try to, you know, cause, cause, uh, the, the guy who has taken over Gotham is basically turned it into a, uh, 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 you know, like a, uh, this, uh, police state. And so he's, he's got that. So you also have, uh, captain, uh, Dick Grayson, who's, uh, at the head of the G, you know, he's the captain of GTO. Then you have Barbara, who's the commissioner. So she's on the police side and there, and then you have Terry, which we don't actually see much of Terry this issue. Because this is really, I mean, we saw him in the first issue. We do see uh, kind of the behind the story of how Terry kind of got involved in becoming uh, Batman Beyond, basically. And it's not through it's not through Bruce. So that's the interesting thing. There's a great reveal with Bruce and Harley at the end of this issue. I will not give it away. It's really just quite. Uh, I don't think it's 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 a bit on the shocking side, so it's interesting. But I really I'm a big fan of of Murphy's White Knight series. Um, they're really good. Uh, this is no exception. Uh, it's another win, and uh, I I really like how he built in the first issue, and I, I'm really excited to see where it he takes it uh, when it all said and done. Uh, next up, we have Ghost Cage number two, uh, written by Nick Dragata and Caleb uh, Goliner with artwork by Nick Dragata. So we have, um, we have Doyle who is the girl that works at the, the, you know, the power plant. And then you have this, the, that Sam, the robot has been sent in to basically not so much shut off the power, but, uh, so what it is, is each levels like a, um, uh, uh, you know, like there's the, like the gas level, level, the water level, they're the, all, the, all these, 
uh, fossil fuel type things. And we still don't quite know why this the evil scientist has sent Sam there. But the thing that's interesting is that um, originally Sam obviously had his goals, but once he met Doyle, that he, it's kind of changed. He's actually, and she's also kind of not so much changed his program, but added to his program. So he, in a way, I guess the best way to describe, he kind of has a conscience. So that that's interesting. Uh, it, uh, a twist we, we found out in the first issue, and it's really building on um, that in the second issue. And what's also interesting is that we discover that one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the, the things that's in the towers is actually his, his, the, the mad scientist's daughter. So that kind of all really, uh, gives it a nice twist and everything. Uh, I'm really digging, I'm really digging this book. I mean, w first of all, I love that Dragata has chosen to do this book in black and white. Cause I think it's very striking and it really adds a lot it, where, um, once, because once again, if you know how to do artwork in black and white, it can be really much more striking than color. And, uh, Dragata does a really nice job here. Once again, I'm liking the story. It's, it's really, you know, kind of peeling back. Uh, we've got, apparently there's only three issues, so it'll all come together in the next issue. Um, I don't think necessarily in some respect that there's a huge story here, um, on the, on the surface, but I think there's that kind of, there's a lot kind of going on underneath, uh, you know, kind of environmental things and, and, and stuff like that. It's, it's really an intriguing book and, and I'm really excited to kind of see, uh, where it all, you know, ends up, uh, in the next issue. Uh, next up we have, uh, what do we have? Oh, Dark Knights of Steel, uh, number, uh, six, uh, written by Tom Taylor with artwork by Yasmin, uh, Pituri. So we, so now, so what it is, the kingdom of the storms, which is, it was, which is black lightning's family. So Supergirl has killed black lightning and his son. And so the daughter is like, Hey, we're going to war. Screw these, uh, screw the house of L they're, they're like, you know, and so what it is, is you have Tim Drake has been undercover, not so much, uh, to he's, he's trying to like, he's not necessarily there. He's there for the elves, but he's not necessarily there to, to find, he's trying to find secrets, but not like what you would normally think. And so they, they find out, um, they find out who he is. So they, you know, they kick him out and everything and they tell him, Hey, we're going to war. And guess what? The Amazons are on our side. So, so then, um, uh, so, so what it is, is um, uh, young kal -El goes to to there uh, to try he's trying to they're trying to stop the war because nobody really wants a war but yet uh and then tim tells him that hey you know kara like killed the killed the guy and they're like well, i don't know that that might you know yeah i don't know that we have any proof of that and she isn't saying so that's kind of what's going on in this issue so we kind of got we're in the middle of the the story arc because we're halfway through and so we're kind of, and, and it makes sense that this issue is kind of a middle issue uh, that Taylor's kind of set up because he's, he's setting, he's really setting the stage for the, the final story, you know, end of this story arc. So we're, that's kind of where this issue lands. I have been really quite surprised by this book. And I, I think what's interesting is how he is, you know, using the characters and they're still like the same characters, you know, but just in this particular, like, you know, medieval type setting, how he's able to kind of, you know, turn them just slightly here and there. And they're still the same characters, but now they're kind of different. Plus you also have, uh, that Superman's parents are alive and that they came to, to earth. And so it's really interesting how he's using all these, these characters and kind of using them in different ways, which is really quite fascinating. I'm really, I'm digging Tom Taylor stuff right now. And, and this book is really, really a good one. And then Purity's artwork is just, this is a really nice looking book. I'm really enjoying it. I think it's a nice twist. It's, you know, for me, it reminds me of like a lot of like elsewhere type things where it's, you're using the superhero, you know, the standard superheroes, but you're kind of giving it a nice twist and turn that you couldn't, you know, that you can do out of continuity like this. So, so I, I, I'm still loving this book. I think it's really worth picking up. Um, I'd say at this point, uh, either you need to you know, read the first, uh, 
you know, five issues up to this one, or at this point, maybe just wait until the trades or uh, uh, the complete collection comes out, maybe in hardcover. And then finally this week, we have Trial of the Amazons number two. Okay, so this is written by Becky Cloonan, Michael W. Conrad, Vita Ilea, Stephanie Williams, and Joelle Jones. Then we have the artwork by Elena Casagrande, uh, Laura Baggy, Baga, oh, Braga, sorry, uh, Skylar Par uh, Partridge, uh, uh, Drina, uh, Adriana Mello, and Joelle Jones. So this is the final part this is of the seventh uh, seven part of the trial of the Amazons. And unfortunately it has been really sadly disappointing. I don't think it's been terrible. I really want to preface that. I think the problem is that really um, there, there's not much meat on the bone here. Like it's just, so you, you know, the, the big thing was uh, uh, killing the queen uh, in the first part and then we find out that there's kind of a demon underneath uh, uh, Themyscira. And then we just, then we have really the trial of the Amazons really wasn't much of anything because there really wasn't like a winner. It was more of like, oh, well, wait, you know, we're doing this, this like trial. And then, and then the bad guy come, you know, he's kind of a, you know, the dark demon sort of thing comes out. But then we got to stop him and, and he possesses the Am Amazons and, it's just, it really just, unfortunately just fell flat. I really, I, I, you know, I have, I, I've, I've enjoyed Conrad and Clunan's run on, on Wonder Woman. It's, it's been a little rough lately before the trial, but un I, it, unfortunately this is, like I said, it's just, it's just not that exciting. I don't think it was terrible. I think first of all, it shouldn't have been seven issues. It was way too drawn out. Um, and it just it, it just kind of ended up being really just mediocre, which is really kind of sad because I think, you know, once again, Flora has been a great character. Wonder Woman. I mean, we all we enjoy these characters. I just think that this it's for me, it's just not good enough. And I think with the amount of talent involved that it's just I think it makes it that much more disappointing for me. Um, the artwork overall is, is good. I mean, you know, once again, you have multiple artists, you know, you have the multiple artists doing it. Uh, overall, I think it looks good. Obviously, uh, we, you can really spot the Joelle Jones artwork, which really stands out because she's a really wonderful artist. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe fingers crossed that maybe down the road that, that they will bring, uh, she will do, uh, more Wonder Girl, uh, stories and maybe hopefully we'll just, you know, I know that it, the book has been canceled as of now, so hopefully maybe it'll come back in maybe a different form or something. But um, but overall, the trial of the Amazon has just been really sadly disappointing. And uh, it's just a real shame. I, I had high hopes for it, but it just didn't quite pan out. Um, that's going to do it for this week. I, we, God, it was quite, quite a big week. Uh, quite a, we got through quite a bit this week. Uh, pretty good timing. Um, I didn't blather on too much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as always, public service announcement. I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction uh, Comics in Long Beach, California. Ryan uh, runs a great store there. Uh, definitely check out their social media. Uh, Tuesdays, uh, they always do unboxing of new comics so you can find out what's coming out. Um, Annie and Eduardo and Wendy and Derek, uh, all uh, wonderful. They all help out. It's, it's a great store. They offer, you know, they do the pull service. That's why I'm able to... Um, uh, have all my books just sitting there waiting for me when I get there. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's really great store and, uh, uh, very excited next week, uh, next weekend, not this coming weekend, the weekend after that is free comic book day. I will be there, uh, slinging, slinging hot free comics. Uh, and we, I will be re, uh, reviewing, uh, the free comic book days, uh, in a video before, uh, uh, before next Wednesday. Uh, I have most all of them. I've got to pick up a few more. Um, uh, and, and so I'll, I'll give you tips on which ones to check out, uh, for that. So watch for that video. Uh, hopefully I'll get that up by Monday. Um, 
And as always, please support your local comic shop. It's very important. Uh, if you live in the LA area, there's Pulp, Fi a Pulp Fiction Culver City run by Chris and her team. Same name, different owner, uh, but they offer the same uh, discounts and, and pull service. It's a uh, great store. And, and as always, uh, you know, really support your local comic shop. It's, it's really important. And um, uh, make sure, like I said, uh, with free comic book day, you definitely go to your comic shop and buy more than just free comics get, because they have to pay for those. So definitely support them financially. Um, that's going to do it. Uh, but as we always end our show is to be kind, uh, please be kind out there. Uh, things are tough. Um, things are tough all over, but, uh, being kind is always a, a good thing. And, um, just just being kind uh, can can really make you feel really good and another person feel really good. So that's going to do it for this show. Uh, please take care of yourselves out there. And uh, once again, support your local comic shop. Uh, this is Stephen from PopCultureMaven.com. Uh, thanks for watching our videos. Please like and share. Uh, please subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel. That would be awesome too. And uh, take care of yourselves and we'll see you uh, next week. All right. Bye-bye.